My name is George Steinmetz. I went to China on three trips last year on assignment for National Geographic magazine. I was trying to capture the geography of China. If you look at it on a map, it's roughly the same area as the United States, and it has a, a similar geographic setting and similar climate, except a bit more extreme. From a geographic standpoint, it's really a, a unique place. One of the critical photos for me was a picture of the Great Wall. The snowfall there is a very ephemeral. It'll snow once or twice in a year and only last uh, maybe a day or so. So it's very difficult to capture. I was down in Yunnan province and we got a call that it snowed on the Great Wall the night before. And we were up there in 18 hours. We got to the base of the wall at about five in the morning and put on our snow clothes and we're up there at sunrise. We hired a motorized hang glider to take me up. It was well below freezing. We came in for a landing. It was so cold that the pilot's feet had gone numb. And he was coming in short and tried to give it more gas, but he couldn't feel his foot pressure in the pedal. And they broke the axle landing, and the thing fell over about 30 feet later. But fortunately, neither of us was injured. We walked away. At the beginning, we had a, a permit to use a helicopter to photograph the largest steelworks in China. The feeling was that a, a big industrial facility would give something from the air that people really hadn't seen before. But the helicopter was costing thousands of dollars a day, and they had to have a crew of about 40 people to follow me around. It was a logistic nightmare. So I thought it was, might be possible for me to go work with my motorized paraglider. Flying a paraglider is not easy, especially in uh, frontier environments where no one's ever flown before. And we would arrive in areas sometimes uh, unscouted. Generally had quite good luck, except for um, I had one incident in a little town called Shanshan, right after takeoff, the lighter unexpectedly banked right, and I hit a tree and ended up uh, getting knocked out and got my face sewn up. But, you know, legs still work, arms still work, brain still work, so let's go to work. When I prepare to do a story like this, I do a, a lot of research. There's one area that really caught my eye, an area called Luoping. It's a, it's a relatively small area in the southern part of Yunnan province. And it has this strange karst terrain. And karst is a, a limestone formation that usually forms in pinnacles. But here, the pinnacles were kind of conical piles, almost like little volcanoes. And for a couple of weeks every year, the flat ground surrounding these pinnacles is uh, bright yellow from the flowering of rape, which they grow for uh, seed oil. In photographing landscapes, I don't generally want to be not much higher than the highest thing in the terrain, so here I'm kind of flying at the top of the pinnacle height. My last flight, we had actually had clear weather, uh, and I flew until I actually ran out of gas and landed in a little empty patch of a rape field. In my research, we come across an area in China where they have concentric circles of housing. It was quite spectacular. What we could see was that the older housing was in the middle, and then as the, as the population of the village, like that of the rest of China, has grown, it was like accreting rings uh, around the center of the village. You know, the Hakka people came up near the Yellow River. Their villages, they made them walled, so it was easily defensible. The newer housing that had been on the outside has, has more windows, more doors and actually has plumbing and electricity. So you can see as China has grown and the economic standards have increased, the, the villages have, have developed accordingly. The Kaidan Basin in uh, Qinghai province, which is an area we had never planned to go, but I heard about it before. It, it's very arid, high altitude, and has a very strong wind. It looked like something you might imagine finding in the moon. It was one of the strangest landscapes I've ever seen. It was a very challenging place to, to fly because of the altitude. It was about, uh, I think about nine or 10,000 feet there, which is not an easy place when you have to run to take off. I thought Qinghai would be most interesting in the fall. It's harvest time, so it's a great time to see people harvesting all kinds of things. We saw the, the cotton harvest, saw people laying hot red peppers out to dry on the desert floor. It's a busy time. The Talimu River, it's a relatively obscure stream, doesn't appear on a lot of the maps. It drains into the Taklimakan Desert. In the fall, the trees all turn bright yellow. Even better for me is it turns bright yellow for about two weeks. And that two week period was the time we were gonna be there. We got very lucky. 
The section I chose was a roadless area. It was about 20 miles long. For me, that's kind of a hazardous flight to fly 20 miles where there's no place to get rescued if you've got a problem. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. One of the photos I really wanted to get was an area called Guilin, particularly a section of Guilin along the Li River. And I flew it every morning and afternoon for about a week until finally we got some sunshine. And we went there at a time of year when it was supposed to be very clear, but very clear, at least when we were there, it meant one sunny day in a week. Most people would think it's a bit foolish to pilot and take pictures at the same time. But for me, it gives me more control over my spatial relationship to the ground. While I'm flying, I can take 30-second break from being pilot and concentrate on taking pictures.